I'm proud of that. I'm glad that that works better than I thought it would. Good okay. idea, Mikkel. Coffee time with Brim. Yeah! <laughs> Cold front came through. Yay! Nomad life is ready. <laughs> How are ya? We are back in Austin for a hot second. So welcome back to an Austin vlog. I <laughs> have like three days in this apartment before I leave again and then have like four or five days when I'm back before I move out. I don't wanna pack things quite yet because I have friends staying in my apartment when I'm gone, but I do want to focus today's vlog on prepping all the things for my little nomad adventure. And I'm looking forward to getting all that in order because I think I would just feel peace about it. So that's what this vlog's gonna focus on, but we have other fun things as well. I might see some friends. I got in my box from Thrive Market because I am working with them on today's video and I can't wait to open it. And you would not believe what I did this morning. It was so unlike me. I did a morning cycling class. I don't think I've done a cardio class in realistically maybe seven months, eight months, around that amount of time. Sometimes when I go to the gym, I'll do like a 10 minute walk on a treadmill warm up, but otherwise I've done no cardio and it felt good. I'm proud of myself. I went like 13 miles. So I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling really, really good about that. It's a gloomy day here. It's actually raining all day, but I think that means fall is finally around the corner. It was 93 degrees yesterday. The next couple days, the high is gonna be in the 70s. So that'll be nice. I can bust out my sweaters. Okay, now I see why people have to wash their hair a lot more frequently than me, because they probably actually work out in sweat. I'm gonna um, tidy up my hair, whip out the dry shampoo. I wanted to say hello uh, before we get today started. I'm happy you're here. Are you having a little comfy rainy day? Yeah, big yawn, huh? That's what the rain does to me too. It makes me seepy also. Oh, a real quick update for the people that have been around for a while and have known my hunt for the perfect thong. I basically gave up and just settled on these. These were skims. I, they're okay, they're the best I could find. But a lot of people were tagging me in this brand that I think kind of popped off on TikTok. It's called Hoo-Ha. They did not have high-waisted thongs, which is what I, I don't like low-waisted. It feels uncomfortable on me for some reason, but they just came out with them. So I ordered one pair and apparently they, I don't know, I didn't actually read everything very well, but I think it's made with some sort of fiber that is like the healthiest for, you know, natural bacteria sort of stuff, but I've always heard 100% cotton is healthiest. And this is 90% tensile and 10% spandex on the body. And then the lining is another mix of things. So I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not, but this is gonna be my first time trying them out today. I'm gonna wear them and I'll, I'll let you know if they feel comfy or not. Here's my little rainy day OOTD. I just got this sweater from Cezanne. It's so fun. It's a, uh, you know me, I love my solids. So it's a little out of my comfort zone, but I figured gloomy day outside, might as well bring some light and some colors. These are the curvy 90s jean from Abercrombie. These boots, I got them last year at Nordstrom Rack um, and they're just really good rain boots. And then I tucked it into a bralette so that it would have more of a cropped look because it is a longer sweater. And first impression on the thong is it's comfortable first impression, but I wouldn't call it high rise. It feels like a mid rise to me. So I'm disappointed in the rise for sure. Such a gloomy day. But one thing that I think is gonna make nomad life a little bit easier is Thrive Market, honestly, because I'm able to get all of my usual favorite snacks and pantry goods. All the things that I know are safely gluten-free delivered to me really quickly also, which is why I love getting to work with Thrive Market. And I'm gonna show y'all my haul this time. But if you haven't heard me talk about Thrive Market, this is, this is how I've been getting pretty much all of my snacks and pantry goods. Also some beauty things, some household things, some pet things. I get like Max's bones there. I've been paying for my own membership the whole time because the membership's really affordable. I pay for a year upfront, which is about $5 a month. It is an online organic grocery retailer where everything is pretty much discounted or guaranteed to be the same or cheaper as in the store. They actually even price match if you find it cheaper elsewhere. But on average, people save 30% on their grocery bill 
And it's just so convenient to have it delivered to you instead of going to like, if I were to find these exact items that I normally get, I'd have to go to several different specialty grocery stores. So I save a lot of time this way. And I always spend usually over about 50 bucks, um, enough to get free shipping, which is also huge. This is important. I have a new discount for y'all. I actually have a link. It'll be down in the description. It's thrivemarket.com slash Jancy. But for this month, if you sign up using my link, you get a free gift valued at up to $60. And I got to peek at what all the gifts are and they're really good. So now might be the time if you've been considering it for a while. I got a lot of road snacks this time because I'll be on the road. I'll, look, he said, are my bones in there? I am going on the road to tag along on Jordy's tour for a bit. So I got a lot of road snacks. These are some of my favorite. These are flaxseed crackers. I find when I'm on the road, I don't eat enough fiber and these have so much fiber. These have nine grams of fiber for eight crackers. They will get you going. <laughs> my favorite little fiber-based candy are these Smart Sweets, but I've never tried these. I think they're new Jolly Gems, but these are plant-based sweets that only have one gram of sugar. So I love those. Oh, I got rosemary flackers as well. I got macadamia nuts. I feel like getting nuts and seeds, especially from their house brand, their Thrive Market brand, saves me a ton of money as well. These are so fire. These are Nashville hot sprouted almonds. Salad toppers. I think it's mostly pumpkin seeds. Yeah, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, but I kind of plan to snack on these more than top salads with these because they are Italian herb flavored little seeds and more smart sweets. So those are my road snacks that I got this time. I, I promise I will get you your bones next time, I promise. But if you are someone that has dietary restrictions like me, something else that makes it really handy is you can sort by whatever dietary restrictions you might have. But like gluten-free, vegan, keto, paleo, whatever, you can just click a button and it will only show you things in that category so you don't have to read labels, which is also really nice. It feels like a layer of protection for me and it saves a lot of time. Reading labels is time consuming. So I adore Thrive Market. I love getting to work with them and um, I've never seen them offer a gift as high as up to $60 before. Okay, just on that one little order, my guaranteed savings were $25.41 if I were to buy those things in store. So right there, that amount of savings pays for five months of my membership in one little tiny order. So um, love the money I save, it's been awesome. And I'm ready to take those on the road. And speaking of packages, I finally got the clothing rack delivered for the storage unit. I had to ask them to send another because it was just it just never arrived. Um, so I would love to go get that set up and turn the storage unit into my walk-in closet. <laughs> you're my best friend. You're my be you're my best friend. You're my best friend. So in case you missed the vlog where I explained this, I am turning this wall into a clothing rack wall. I'm keeping this corner as it is, I'm keeping the desk as it is. And then back here, I'm basically gonna have storage bins of things that I might want to grab or swap out, like shoes, maybe some kitchen stuff, bags, refills for cosmetic bathroom things that I just have on hand already things that I might want access to. So I have one clothing rack. We're gonna try to build it and see how big it is. It has two bars and see if one is enough or if I might wanna order a second one for in here, but they'll basically go right here. So I'm excited, let's see, let's see how it looks. Well, here she is. She rolls, which is really nice. I could even like roll it to my apartment, load it up with clothes and roll it back here. But I think, with two rods, it should be enough with the stuff I'm taking with me. That's what we'll have to find out later, but I'm pleased. Just knocked out some computer work and it's officially time for a coffee break. So just made this latte, haven't sipped it yet. I asked over on Instagram, which by the way, if you don't follow me over on Instagram, I feel like it's the easiest way to like ask questions and connect with people because it's very organized and helpful for me as a creator. So 
follow me over there if you want to hang out and chat more. But I asked for frequently asked questions about what you want to know about nomad life just a couple hours ago and I got a lot. I'm going to do blind reaction, rapid fire, FAQ about what my general plans are preparing for nomad life. And I might be preparing completely wrong because I've never done this before, but I've given it a lot of thought. So here is a coffee time FAQ rapid fire segment. Ready, set, go. How will you receive mail packages? I have a calendar with my manager of every address I will be staying at um, so that if they can mail directly to my address, awesome. But if timing is TBD slash general mail, I'm setting up a PO box, which I actually have to go get the keys for tomorrow. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. A lot of people want to know if I will be staying with my boyfriend Jordy while on the road. The answer is no. I actually am going to be seeing him a few times, probably half the stops I'll, I'll be seeing him. But even in Oceanside where he lives and in like Fairhope where his family is, we're gonna go there for a little bit of holidays because his, his dad is sick. I got my own spots at all those places and mostly because I wanna be able to have my own space to work. That's the main reason why I was pretty adamant on getting my own spot. A lot of people wanted to know how I booked my places to stay. I booked everything through either Airbnb, VRBO, or Sonder, which are like fully furnished apartments. And I just price compared and every single spot that I'm staying is literally cheaper per night than my rent would have been here. So I'm saving so much money, which feels really nice. And I'm excited about that. Will Max be coming with you? Yes. And a lot of people wanted to know how. And in fact, he's asking to come in. He asked to go out and I'm going to let him in. So after moving out, I only have one little three day trip where Max will be with my parents because I'm flying and flying back. But otherwise, everywhere I'm staying, Max is coming with me. We are driving. You can sort by dog friendly places, but something else that I've learned is um, sometimes if they list as not pet friendly, I message the hosts before booking and ask if I could pay a deposit or an extra little pet fee or whatever to bring my dog. And a lot of, some of them said no, a lot of them said yes. So I ended up booking places that weren't pet friendly and paid an extra little fee to bring Max. People want to know if I'm renting a car, everywhere I'm going besides that one three little day trip to Nashville, I am driving too. So I will have my own car and I'm gonna have like a little rig in my car of all of my stuff, which we'll talk through in a little bit. How much are you packing? So I'm gonna be packing probably more than I need. I actually have a list ongoing as I think of things I want to bring with me, I add it to this list. So I have this list of all the things I will be packing, some of them essential, some of them non-essential, but I'm packing things that just make me happy, like um, my Barefoot Dreams blanket, some slippers, a, a vase so I can have fresh flowers, my favorite candle. I'm gonna bring my Our Place pot, my, um, my pan that does everything so that I can have it be safely gluten-free and basically cook everything in it. And then I have Mac stuff, I have clothes, some important documents, tripod, uh, my own towels, probably my own sheets if everywhere I'm staying has a queen bed. Just things like that, maybe even my favorite coffee mugs. I'm just gonna have a lot of my favorites so it feels like home to me. This person says, doesn't it feel wasteful to spend so much time and effort trying to settle down and decorate? This person must have not been around my channel for very long. I typically stay in spots for less than a year, which is the one thing I'm nervous about, about buying a house, but I pretty much move every year and I'm mostly making this decision based off of the financial aspect of this. I would, I would like to stay in this apartment a little bit longer. I just can't justify paying $3,600 a month for this apartment. So to me, it feels wasteful to stay in this apartment and it feels like the financially smart thing to do to save money while getting to travel, see family, see Jordy, and figure out, you know, where I want to eventually settle in Austin and buy. How long are you renting most of your spots? The quickest I'm staying is, besides that three day trip, the shortest spot is five nights, the longest spot is a month. And I've only booked through the end of January so far. Will it be tougher to see your long distance boyfriend or no difference from the usual? I would actually say maybe a little bit easier because I will have my dog with me I won't have to figure out dog sitter. I'll have my own car. Um, it'll be harder to get to places as opposed to hopping on a plane, but I think it's gonna be easier to see him. And you know, we have the holidays coming up, so we're trying to spend time with our own families and a little bit of each other's families during the holidays too. I feel like I should just specify this too in case you missed it. All of my big furniture is going in a storage unit that I'm just gonna have movers move it into. And then I'm keeping my small storage unit here, which we were just in to have things that I want to access frequently, like clothes, extra clothes, hang it up on that clothing rack we just built and have storage bins of all the additional extra stuff I might want to swap out or take with me when I'm staying here in Austin or whatever. 
Uh, will you have family or friends visit? Yes. So a lot of the spots, I mean, some of the spots are literally here in Texas and I'm staying places to be around friends and family. Like I'm staying in New Braunfels for a week where my best friends live. I'm in Austin for a while. So I'll be near friends and family. Um, but like one of my stops is New Orleans cause I have family there and my mom's coming with me on that one. One of my stops is where Jordy's family is. The month that I am in uh, California, I have all of my California friends and a lot of new friends and new community that I kind of want to get familiar with because that's where Jordy's going to end up and just kind of feel that out. Are you going to miss making your living space your own, decorating, etc.? Yeah, I think I will, um, but it's so temporary. For me, I think I'm just doing it a few months, so I'm seeing it as a way to continue to save to buy hopefully a house that I can make my dream. And so I'm seeing it as an investment and also an opportunity to just kind of live footloose and fancy free for a little bit without much tying me down. Someone wanted to know cost compared to rent. I feel like that's a super unique situation based off of like where I am in Austin. And I'm thinking of everything in terms of nightly expenses. So my Austin rent, when you take what they're gonna charge me to go month to month and then also add in pet rent, parking, bills, utilities, uh, Wi-Fi all the renter's insurance, all the expenses of being in an apartment, it comes to about $150 a night for me to be in this apartment. And most of the spots I'm booking are about a hundred bucks a night, give or take. So I'm saving about $50 a night, not including the fact that if I were to go and travel to these places, I'd be paying for travel and rent. I'd be paying for a dog sitter. I'd be paying for a rental car. So all in all, if I'm traveling, I'm saving a huge amount of money, but even just night to night in comparison to this apartment, I'm saving about 50 bucks a night, which is awesome. It's so cool. Like I'm really so, so thrilled about the way that this is working out before I buy. And I'm gonna end on this one. Um, how much are you packing and are you afraid about forgetting something? I think that that's why having a storage unit I can access makes me feel a lot more comfortable with it. But also I kind of, I feel this way when packing for just a trip also. I think about what are the things I can't rebuy if I leave it at home. And usually that's medication, that's um, you know your ID, your credit cards, that's a couple specifics. Otherwise, if you leave something at home and it's critical that you have it and you don't have it with you, you can always rebuy it. You forget your toothbrush, you can rebuy it, things like that. And having that mentality makes me feel a lot less stressed. And yeah, it's not necessarily financially smart to rebuy things. It would be great to just remember to bring it, but that takes the stress and the pressure off of it for me. And it helps me reframe what are things that are so essential I cannot repurchase. I'm gonna end with that, but there's literally so many. Wow. Um, and we're gonna figure it out as we go, but I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I bought to make my car rig. I'll be setting up a car rig um, a little bit easier and I'm excited to kind of test them out a little. The first thing that I ordered for this adventure are these garment bags and they came in a pack of three on Amazon. So I just ordered one pack of three and they look like they expand pretty wide, but I wanna see how much clothes fits and then to know if I should order more. I'm gonna have like a grab bag suitcase of just essential overnight things. And then most of my clothes I'm gonna leave on their hangers and put in a garment bag so that whenever I get to my new spot, I just take these up to the closet, hang it, unzip it, and I don't have to like fold, unfold, hang clothes every time I go somewhere new. But I wanna see how many pieces of clothes I can fit in this. I feel like the true test of sweaters cause they're thicker and I'll be doing this mostly during the winter, I think, hopefully not through the spring, but who knows. Um, so I'm gonna grab, let's grab, this many. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's call it 15. Let's do, let's see if I can fit 15 sweaters into one of these. That work. I successfully easily fit 15 sweaters in this. I feel like I could even fit more. So I think three of these should be plenty. I'm not going to take more than 45 sweaters with me. That'd be ridiculous. Um, so that's how I'm planning on transporting my clothes, throw them in the back of my car like that. Just get to the Airbnbs and hang them up and unzip it. And boom, I'm unpacked. Pretty smart, right? I'm proud of that. I'm glad that that works better than I thought it would. Okay, the other thing I bought is I was looking at all the pictures. I've been like really <laughs> zooming into every picture of every spot I'm staying. And a lot of the spots I'm staying don't have dressers. Like even the spot I'm staying in for a month doesn't have a dresser. So I was thinking, what do I do with like socks, underwear, sports bras, tanks, leggings, all the little things that I have folded in my dresser right now. I ordered these. They come in packs of two. These are little under the bed storage things 
that have a zippable top and a handle and it has Velcro on the inside and you insert your own little dividers to make drawers. So I'm gonna try putting drawers in one of these and I kind of want to like fake pack it with things to see how it would work. Like I'll do a small one for socks, a medium one for like maybe undershirts, sports bras. So I made a thicker one, I think probably the width of leggings and then three smaller ones for like tanks and stuff. Let's try example packing it. I'm actually so impressed with that. I feel like the handles are gonna be so easy for loading, unloading. The zipper's gonna keep everything in place. The fact that it's clear, I can see what's inside of it. And the spots that I'm staying that are tied on storage, these are made for under the bed. So I could put them under the bed and just treat it like drawers, pull them in, pull them out. That is awesome. I'm actually so excited about how great that's gonna be. This is my jewelry box. It is big. It's awesome, actually. I love this jewelry box. I have like, can you see that? Things are very organized and laid out inside of here. And I wanna see how much I can make sense in this. I've talked about this in some videos of like, I don't fully know if this was a good purchase or not. It's like a jewelry organizer. It folds to this size, which is kind of big, but you, you also hang it in a closet or on a door or whatever. Um, but these big pockets, I'm confused about them. So yeah, it's confusing. But I'm gonna try, try to see what makes sense and see if this is a keep or not. Okay, here's what I've narrowed it down to to take with me. So I have seven of my favorite necklaces and we'll see if they get tangled or not. They are like buckled in, but somebody tells me they might still get a little tangled. This little pocket are pendants for chains, a couple studs and like everyday hoops. These are rings. These are super statementy earrings and like medium statementy earrings. This is just a necklace that I need to untangle <laughs> that I haven't been able to. And then I would love comments as to what you think could go in here. It has to be essential enough for me to actually want to take. I'm thinking maybe like hair ties could be one of these pockets, but they're like, here's my very vein. My hand is so veiny after doing cardio this morning, but my hand for scale something that won't get like too tangled, but is essential enough and like makes sense to store with jewelry. But I feel, I feel good about that. And it's magnetic, so it's nice that it stays folded up. I still don't know if I'd recommend this due to the size. I wish they made a half size one with just the smaller pockets, but you know, better than this old big boy if we're on the road. Good morning, it's the next day and guess what? A cold front came through, so I'm dressed like a fall girl. I got boots and a jacket and layers and a turtleneck, and I'm so excited. Yesterday was a very like get things organized around the house day. Today is a very errands get things organized day. Um, spent this morning just getting ready here. I'm about to go meet Jency for a coffee before I have a meeting, and then we're going to set up my PO box. Get these guys refresh before I leave yet again. And then beyond that, I need to check my list. I have all today written down, but I did actually wake up with a little bit of a headache, which I feel like happens when the weather changes for me. So my brain's not working fully, but I'm happy to be in fall clothes and go get a fall drink with a fall friend. Jinsey's a year-round friend, but it just sounded fun to say that. That was the most unenthusiastic <laughs> I've ever Mine was heard in my life. I win. I was carrying the team with my yes. Coffee time with friends. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so we did pumpkin pie mm -hmm. and toasted marshmallow. Half sweet. Half sweet. Mm -hmm. oat and milk. with oat milk. We called it the yam latte. Because it's like, I haven't tried it yet, but you know that Thanksgiving dish, which is like yams and sweet potatoes? Yeah. I think pumpkins and yams are second cousins. Aren't sweet potatoes and yams the same thing? Yeah. I think but so. no, yams are longer. Yam is just <laughs> made backwards. Also yeah. a true so. fact. <laughs> If it's bad, I didn't make it. Oh no, it's good. <laughs> if it's bad, it was hey, not Hey, try this and put it on the menu. You had a heart. I got a smiley face on mine. 
Hey. Do you not love oh me? Oh my gosh. It's good, right? <laughs> that's fire. Said, Happy that's fire. Happy <laughs> Damn, that's Can really Can you put good. it on the menu? Yeah, we need to name Can it Can we call you? it the, the, the Moco Yam? Anyways, not, this has been lovely. An no, it's not. Okay, seriously, that drink was a game changer. If you live in Austin, go to Noble Joe's, and if Dane or Jules is working, tell them you want the Mikel Yam Latte. See if they remember. Because um, it was actually so good. My meeting was moved to 2.30, so I'm gonna quickly fix my nails before the meeting and then do the P.O. box after. Because it's spooky season, I think I wanna do like like a blood red, like as deep of a red as I can. And I wanna go, sh I always ask them to make it shorter and they're always like, ah, and I'm like, please. So I think <laughs> I'm gonna see how short they'll let me go. Blood red nails, spooky season. Ready for the reveal? They're honestly perfect. They finally, gave me a link that I wanted. And it's so funny because they have, I would guess over 300 dip colors at the spot that I go. They have so many, so many, like baskets and baskets and baskets of colors. And there was four people in the salon, three, not including me getting their nails done. And I went through all the colors and picked the perfect one. And we had to wait because one of the other girls was using that one out of all the colors. So this must be the color of the month because it is spoopy season. Um, but I'm very pleased with it. And I'm going to run home, do that meeting before we strike back out and do some more errands. Okay. Post meeting just pulled up to the post office to try to set up my PO box. I might've made a little mistake. I'm sure very few people are going to also try to do this and are watching this video to figure out how to start an adventure like this. But in case you are, so I set up my PO box and one of the questions it asks you is like, what's your permanent address? Which obviously I won't have one. So I was like, I guess I'll put my parents' address. So I did that. And then later realized to set up your PO box, you have to bring proof of your permanent address. All I have is one dentist bill that was accidentally sent to my parents. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is my legal name is Christiane Jancy. My dad's name is Christopher Jancy. So it shows that the patient's name is my name, but it was sent to my dad. So it has my name, Christian Jancy, but sent to Chris Jancy. And I'm hoping they will think I am Chris Jancy. And I'm also hoping that they will take a like medical bill. There's probably a 40% chance of this working out, but let's go find out together, I guess. <laughs> She's the proud new owner of a PO box. He was like, you have four and a half minutes, I'm closing. And I was like, okay. And then he was really nice and he did everything for me. Yay, Nomad Life is ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling way better after the last couple days thinking through all the little logistical things, testing out the things I bought. So thanks to y'all for coming along with me for that journey. Next vlog will be at the beach with my parents. I've seen a lot of comments being like, hey, where's Chris and Carolyn? We miss them. And so Chris and Carolyn content coming soon. I, for the rest of the day, just have computer work. So my plan is to take my computer up to the roof since it is such a beautiful, it's like up to 70 degrees now. It's just a perfect day. Get some fresh air and get a few hours of that done. So I'm gonna end the vlog here, but I wanted to say thanks again to Thrive Market for partnering with me on this video. Claim that free gift if you want it. All you do is go to thrivemarket.com slash Jancy. I'll have that in the description too, so it's clickable, but love getting to work with them. And I love y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you have the best rest of your day. And I will see you at the beach very soon. Bye. So give me a sign. Give me a sign. Oh, give me a sign. Baby, give me a sign. Just give me one more. Talking to you. Here we go again. Staying up all night to see if you've been texting me. Where do we go from here?